Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Airy, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado let's go. Today's first story. OP trusted their wife's friendships with other men until discovering her affair with a friend named AP, confronted with evidence of their infidelity, he ends the marriage. At her mother's funeral, the wife and AP attend, provoking a confrontation. OP punches AP, exposing the affair publicly, leading to social isolation for the wife and AP. The wife battles severe depression, seeking treatment while frequently apologizing to him, who struggles to comprehend her actions. Now let's get into the story. I always thought it was a good thing that I, 29, let my wife, 25, befriend guys. I trusted her, and she always let me check her phone whenever I wanted. Because of that, I didn't check it at all, really. I knew she was friends with a guy we'll call AP. She never told me she was going out with him specifically. She'd just say friends. A lot of nights I'd go with her and see her interact with AP among other friends. It looked natural and guilt-free. Even though the guy was an obnoxious idiot, they didn't look nervous or flirtatious or anything. Now I know that on nights I didn't go with her, she was seeing him alone. I never would have thought my nice, sweet, charismatic wife would be romantically interested in this butthole. Most nights when we were out with him and other friends, he wouldn't pay for himself. He never offered to treat the group to drinks, even though the rest of us did it every once in a while. I was starting to see him as the least desirable of all my wife's friends. That's why it was so much worse when I arrived home one day to find him walking out of my house with my wife. I blew up on them asking why he was here. He started stammering and acting like the idiot he always was. My wife figured the best way to handle it was to pretend he was only there to catch out and play pool. She didn't expect me to leave them both standing there and go check downstairs for evidence. She followed right behind me through the house, and as I got closer to the basement, she started pulling on my shirt. I found her clothes on the pool table, along with a towel laid down to keep the table clean. I didn't wait, debate, argue, or think twice about it. The evidence was there. She cried and tried to negotiate an arrangement so that she could keep sleeping in the house each night. I told her no repeatedly until she took some of her stuff and left for stupid AP's house. As I grieved and contacted my mom and family for support, fate wanted to give me one more tragedy to deal with. One week later, my mom passed away. It was a really terrible time for me, but even during this time, I didn't consider reaching out to my ex. I only communicated with family and really close friends. They helped me plan her funeral, and when the day came, the last people I would have expected to see there were my wife or her AP. Yet there they were, walking over to me like they were the greatest thing to ever happen. I couldn't believe my wife's innocent and happy demeanor, like she had no idea her being there would bother me. On the other hand, I could totally understand AP's cocky expression. I was sure the expression on my face told them they weren't welcome. But AP actually had the nerve to mock me at my mother's funeral. He said my mom wasn't the only thing I lost this week. I saw red spreading in from the corners of my vision, and everything got a little blurry. I remember feeling my arm wind up on its own just before the knockout punch. He landed flat on the ground, and everyone gasped. I took the opportunity to announce my wife's affair and the reason for our divorce. Nobody wasted any time in throwing insults at her and demanding that she leave. When she hesitated to leave, people started telling her to shoo and waving their scarves or coats at her like an animal. I walked away and was supported physically and emotionally by friends and family for the rest of the day. She started screaming in frustration for AP to wake up and come with her. He finally did, and they were led away by security. He finally did, and they were led away by security. From then on, my wife's social life was over. Everyone she knew thought she was gross and scandalous. Idiotic AP started believing she would cheat on him, so he left her. Maybe he got a little wiser because of all this. After the divorce was final, my ex was admitted to a mental institution to try to get a handle on her extreme depression and remorse. She felt like she didn't know who she was, and she apologized to me at least once a month. It was hard for her to forgive herself, but I just don't understand how she couldn't see it was wrong to begin with. Today's second story. In this story, husband in his early 30s becomes suspicious when his wife, after joining a yoga and meditation class, starts coming home distant and satisfied. His concerns deepen when she denies any issues and gives him special attention. He investigates and discovers his wife and the yoga instructor involved in an affair. 
he confronts them, records the incident, and posts it online, leading to a divorce that favors him. Despite initial bitterness, he ultimately finds peace and advises others to trust their instincts, gather evidence, and focus on self-discovery if they suspect infidelity in their relationships. Now let's get into the story. My wife 27, took a yoga and meditation class. She really enjoyed it, but not as much as I 31, did. Her body got extremely toned and tempting, and I wasn't the only one that was tempted. I wish I would have gone with her or something, but I got off work too late. Soon my wife started coming home and seeming very satisfied and content, not like the ravenous female she usually was. After class us, she would just shower and go to bed, and it really bummed me out. I tried talking to her on the second night it happened, but she said she felt fatigued from her cycle. After I was sure that couldn't still be the problem, I tried asking her again if something was going on. She didn't give me any answer. She just did me a special favor she didn't usually do. I couldn't argue at that time since I wasn't getting anywhere by asking her directly. I decided to go to the yoga class a little bit before it was over. Through the glass window, I saw him helping her stretch. I didn't realize he was allowed to touch my wife. I never would have wanted her to join this class. Plus, I was starting to recall her saying that she was only signing up for the meditation part of it when she got home. I wasn't sure what to say or do. I eventually asked her if yoga class was becoming easier the longer she did it. She said yes, of course. I asked her if the instructor ever had to help her with the moves. I asked her if the instructor ever had to help her with the moves. She looked at me a little curiously, but said no. She asked if I'd be jealous. I was starting to get ticked off now. She lied and then wanted me to be jealous. I told her I would be disappointed if another man gave her special attention or got to feel her body even a little bit. It. She looked down and shrugged quietly, saying I didn't need to worry about it. I was not convinced. The next day I left work a little early again and acted like I was on the phone outside the yoga class. But my phone camera was on and recording through the window. He wasn't touching her, but they were close. For a room of 25 people. When everyone was dismissed, the camera recorded them going into the back room alone. Someone held the door open for me and I snuck into the empty studio. I went into the hallway, still recording, and stood by the closed office door until I heard moaning. I opened the door, filming a few humps before the yelling started. My wife was in complete shock. The yoga instructor was furious, this telling me to get out. It was employees only and they were closed. I told him my wife wasn't an employee and her legs were obviously open. He clarified that I was her husband like a dumbass all while I was still recording. He couldn't physically push me out and he was the one in trouble. He put his hands up and said he didn't know she was married and all he wanted was for us to leave because the business was closed. I filmed my walk out, waiting for my wife to follow. She came out one minute after me, looking like her life was over. She asked me if I could turn off the camera and we could talk. I told her there was nothing she could say to make this better. I had her on camera having an affair so she wasn't going to get anything out of our divorce and he was going out of business. She started sobbing in the parking lot and people stopped to watch. She pleaded with me not to share the video. I told her I was definitely going to and I sat in my car with it locked to post it on my pages and directly on the business reviews page. By the time I drove home, there was a buzz of activity and reactions. People commented, saying they understood his temptation and how bad this was going to be for him. Some girls claimed he looked at them funny too. Whether or not he did, at least they got a little attention out of this claim. The divorce went extremely well for me and all my wife could do was try to lay low. I know she no longer had a yoga class to go to and last I heard, she moved in with a friend of hers. I guess after I exposed his nasty business, AP lost all feelings for her. I hope he had a life backup plan like I should have had. I'm a little bitter, but I'm actually doing fine. I'm glad I had all the opportunities and hunches I needed to catch her in the act and file in court. I'm glad she didn't try to come back home except when she got permission to get her stuff. She accepted the shameful truth and didn't try to beg for forgiveness beyond our conversation in front of the yoga place. She had to lay really low for a while, and I think she sold her stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Don't feel bad for her, though. She wasn't thinking about how much she loved me or how much trust one had in her that she was throwing away. Maybe that's why it was easier for me to let her go without feeling too bad. Thank goodness I have not started another serious relationship. I've been working and enjoying my time off work. I don't pressure myself for anything, and I feel peaceful. I'm glad custody wasn't an issue and that I could display her actions for everyone to see. If you're going through something that just isn't right with your spouse, follow your gut, gather evidence, and stay strong.
If you're scared, take the time to get to know yourself by journaling and thinking about things you want to spend your time doing. That's the best advice I can offer. Today's third story. This is a story about a newlywed couple whose relationship quickly unravels due to infidelity and betrayal. The husband discovers that his wife had been exchanging intimate messages with one of his close friends. He confronts her, leading to a major argument and the wife deleting all evidence of the messages. Shortly after, the husband receives devastating news that his friend has committed suicide. In the midst of this turmoil, the wife's affair with the friend comes to light as the husband finds incriminating messages indicating a deeper emotional involvement. He decides to file for divorce and seeks legal assistance. The wife attempts suicide, but her husband is skeptical of her motives. As the divorce process begins, more disturbing details about the affair emerge, including financial support and clandestine hotel meetings. The husband ultimately chooses to end the marriage, relying on the support of friends and family to navigate this challenging chapter in his life. Now let's get into the story. I and my wife have been married for just over a month. My friend worked with me for three years and was one of my best friends. One day we were lying in bed and she received a message from one of my friends and immediately swiped up. I asked her what it was and she told me she wants to protect his privacy. I reminded her that she's my wife and she should never hide anything, especially messages from other dudes. She freaked out by saying you don't trust me? I can't believe this. I'm sleeping on the couch. And then deleted everything off her phone between him and her and blocked him on everything. The next day rolls around and she's still mad at me. While I'm also still mad at her. I man up and tell her she's lost some of my trust. But if she was being honest that it really was nothing, then I would forgive her if I can see the message. The next day I got woken up by a call from my coworker, a different one that my friend killed himself the night before. I was dumb, sounded and shocked. I had just seen him two days before and we were talking about him taking a day off to go fishing. I could tell that my wife was taking it hard too, and I thought it was odd because she had only met him three or four times. A few days later, the day after we celebrated our one month, I got a call from the wife saying she needed to talk to me then unloaded information that my wife and friend had been talking about for months. I came over and she showed me the messages that said I can't wait for our future together. I can't wait to meet our children, I love you and talked about how magical the other day was. I scrolled through the messages for about 30 minutes and didn't even get to the end of the week. The last text he sent was to my wife saying I love you, this isn't your fault. When I came home she was gone. I went on a two-day bender with no contact with her and called my family to let them know what happened. They then put me in contact with their lawyer and after close to six hours of talking to him, I decided to file for a divorce. Last night I got a message from her that said I want to work through this and we should both go to individual and couples counseling. I haven't messaged her back. I'm terrified that she will try to rake me over the coals, but I hope that she is civil about everything and says my stuff is mine and your stuff is yours. I hope that she isn't pregnant too. Update first, I wanted to say thank you to everyone for your support. This has been a hard few weeks, but I have gotten through it mostly sober and well enough with the help of my friends and family. Second, I'd like to explain the backstory a bit. Me and my future ex-wife have been dating for six years and engaged since February. We got married in September and in most of that time we dated. I worked over the road for four years and in the last two years I settled into a nice little town where there was steady work in my that didn't require me to move around a lot. Third, the man that she cheated on me with was a good friend of mine. He lived in the same town that I settled in and we were fishing buddies for two to three years. I got him a job with me and we worked together for three years. I've had him and his girlfriend over at my place. And have been over at theirs for dinner multiple times. I didn't invite him to our wedding because of a joke he told where the punchline was about sleeping with someone's wife, and he stared at me for one or two seconds too long and it made my stomach churn. Fourth, I discovered that my wife broke things off with him the day before he committed suicide and that my wife was the last person he texted before doing the deed. I did not attend the funeral or memorial service for the recently departed. I've been trying to keep my contact with my wife to as little as possible, answering questions about health insurance and other similar things. Shortly after my first post, I hired a lawyer and had him start writing up the paperwork for a divorce. Three to four days after she left, I was told by my friend that my wife texted her and said she was in the hospital for a suicide attempt. An hour later, I got a text from my wife saying she was released because she promised not to hurt herself to the staff. I think she was lying. That's not how hospitals in that area deal with life-ending attempts. A day after that, I got the Apple Watch from the departed man's girlfriend, 
which has messages dating back to the day that we got back from our honeymoon in early October. I gave the watch to the lawyer and he has all the messages and pictures now for the case. They both deleted messages, so I can't see them till we get the phone back from the police. There has really been no other communication besides setting up a time when she can come and get more of her clothes. Me and my friend's girlfriend have talked occasionally, and I thanked her for telling me, even though I know it must have been extremely heartbreaking for her. I'm going to be gifting her a lot of stuff or just probably anonymous cash in the mailbox to help her and her daughter out. The divorce was filed and she should be getting served soon, by the end of today or by next week. I still do not think she knows about my plans for divorce, and I'm fine with that. The lawyer said that our state is a no-fault state, so technically she would have the ability to try and claim half of my things. But since the marriage was so short, the judge will just separate us with our things from before the marriage. I'm not looking to go after anything of hers. I don't want her car. I don't want her money, not that she has any. I just want to keep my house, car, dogs, and retirement. And I just hope that she is not pregnant. Update 2 So after a while, more and more people from work started telling me that they knew about the affair but didn't want to tell me because it wasn't my place or I didn't want to make things awkward. Apparently, the guy was not quiet about it and was sending her nudes around work. So I've had guys coming up showing me my wife saying, hey, dude, isn't this your wife? I also learned that she sent him money a couple of times, part of the money that I had sent her to pay for the wedding. I also learned that they had been continually calling each other daily, three to six times a day for months, and at some point they had gotten a hotel room together sometime in August or September. She has continually lied until I brought up all the facts. She got served this weekend, and I couldn't be happier. Although everything honestly seems bland and bleak, I spent the last six years of my life dedicated to her. We were planning our future, and she threw it all away. And she really thought that there would be some semblance of forgiveness and a relationship that we could heal together. After this, I have my family and uncertain friends to thank for their constant love and support. I wanted to thank each and every one of you for your advice and support through this time in my life. I wanted to thank each and every one of you for your advice and support through this time in my life. Here are my thoughts on the situation. OP, I'm really sorry to hear about the difficult situation you've been through. In my view, it seems like your wife's desire to reconcile with you may be influenced by the fact that her affair partner is no longer in the picture. With him gone, she might see you as a fallback option. It's a positive move that you didn't accept this and chose to initiate divorce proceedings. Now, she's facing the consequences of her actions, losing both her affair partner and her marriage. She will have to carry the weight of her decisions and the guilt of contributing to the breakdown of her marriage and the tragic outcome involving the other man. Some might call this karma. I wish you the best of luck, OP.